average Joe or Jennifer <laughs> coming to Netflix wanting to oh see what pole dancing is about and then they like see uh, you know people crying in this circle with poles and it's just like it can get the wrong you can get the wrong impression if you're coming in and you're just wanting to like pole dance and have fun and pole dancing means different things to different people and that's what it did not portray. What is up? I hope all of you guys are doing wonderful today. Today's video is going to be a video of me, a pole dancer, reacting or commenting, critiquing the new pole dancing documentary called Strip Down, Rise Up. I'm gonna kind of give my two cents, but also go through the different criticisms it's been getting because if you're not a pole dancer, first of all, this video is for you because I think that if you're not a pole dancer, you need to hear pole dancers' critiques of the documentary because as I'm gonna get into later, it doesn't really portray what pole dancing really is as a whole, which is kind of the main critique it's been getting. There's a lot of drama. Oh, not drama. Some of it is a little bit drama-y, but there's a lot of um, back and forth in the Polancing community, a lot of different opinions. I want to give a couple disclaimers. I hate disclaimers, so I'm gonna make it really fast. My self-tan is really bad. I know, I haven't done my hands yet. Before you point it out, just wanted to point it out, because someone's gonna point it out. Um, yeah, I think that was all. There wasn't really, there was just one disclaimer. So, I want to start with my overall thoughts on the documentary, then go into some of the criticisms it's been getting in general, whether I agree with them or not. I think I actually agree with almost all of the criticisms. Like, I'm very much all over the place. And then <laughs> later I actually have some insight from a stripper that's here on YouTube and on Instagram that I contacted because I wanted some insight from a stripper's view because I do pole dancing for fitness and there's, I don't know, I just, thought there might be some things that I'm missing, some critiques I'm missing, given that I do pole dancing for fitness, I might be biased in, in my review or in my, my thoughts on it, like I might not be as sensitive to certain things, so I thought I'd get some insight from an, a strip, an, an stripper, do I know grammar, do I know English? A stripper, yes. <laughs> so yeah, okay, my overall thoughts on the documentary is honestly when I first watched it, before I got any like input, any, heard any critiques, I enjoyed it. Itchy fucking nose, dude. <laughs> I enjoyed it, and the reason being I enjoyed it, I think, is because I could relate to it, because for me, pole dancing does that for me. For me, pole dancing is sort of a trauma, healing, cliche-ass thing. So even though for me, and for a lot of pole dancers, their experience is not gonna be sitting around in a circle talking about your trauma, I think that there is a subsection of pole dancers that can relate to this documentary and that probably did resonate with it because there is people that pole dancing means that for. So my initial response was that I enjoyed it. That being said, I enjoyed it for what it was. I enjoyed it for being a documentary, not on pole dancing per se, not on pole dancing as a whole community, not a you know, it's not pole dancing from a bird's eye view. I think it's more, it was intended to be more, oh my god, I remember the second disclaimer. My dad's watching the news downstairs and he watches it really loud, so if you can hear like that in the background, I'm so sorry. I'm not not filming this because my dad's watching the news. Anyways, the documentary wasn't really meant to be a documentary on pole dancing as a whole. It was a documentary specifically for S Factor, the studio S Factor, their whole thing about women empowerment and female p power, maybe yeah, empowerment, that's like the same thing as what I just said. It basically is about the studio S Factor and about reconnecting with your body for pole dancing. So it is not a documentary on pole dancing as a whole and I think this is where a lot of the criticism stems from, that we kind of as a pole dancing community expected this documentary on fucking Netflix, on this big platform that was finally gonna show what pole dancing is and then it ends up being this documentary that like kind of can be off-putting to the, you know, average Joe or Jennifer, average Jennifer, can I say that? Average Jennifer, I don't know why I thought of it, but the average Joe or Jennifer <laughs> coming to Netflix wanting to, oh, see what pole dancing is about, and then they like see, uh, you know, people crying in this circle with poles, and it's just like, it can get the wrong, you can get the wrong impression if you're coming in and you're just wanting to like pole dance and have fun, and pole dancing means different things to different people, and that's what it did not portray. I think it would have been somewhat okay, like, or like, it would have been much better if they did a good job at discerning that, like, explaining. A documentary should always do this, it should always tell you exactly what it's talking about. It should be like, this is 
not a representation of the whole pole dancing community this is the s factor studio and this is specifically like sort of different than all pole dancing studios but it didn't make enough effort to actually discern what it was about it sort of did but it was kind of implied that like people knew but people might not know like people remember to breathe <laughs> I forget to breathe sometimes, but you know people might not know that going into it like uh, the average Joe or Jennifer might be like I don't know Like I, is this what pole dancing is? Is this is this what it is? Like is it this therapy thing? And, and that just reminds me actually another criticism is that they're portraying it as if a pole dancing teacher is supposed to be a therapist And that they're not licensed therapists like there's all of these like small issues I'm, I'm probably gonna miss some of the points, but I'm just kind of I'm talking about as much as I can remember and as much as I've put down in my notes here. Another criticism that it's gotten is that it doesn't really go into or credit properly the origin of pole dancing. Like it sort of, sort of brushes over it and if anything it actually like kind of click baits with stripping. It's like strip down, rise up. So it kind of click baits with that to get people in like oh like everyone's kind of interested in stripping. Like everyone's, everyone is kind of interested in stripping like it. I don't know what that was, but it is something that people are curious about like Everyone really I think and so they're gonna people are gonna come in But then they don't really they do like little sections where they kind of mention it And I know I think it isn't it Janine butterfly this one poll answer They mention how she was or she mentions in an interview how she was inspired by this Stripper, but they don't interview the stripper like they should they could have easily brought in some more stripper content or crediting strippers more by adding like tiny small sections because I get that it's a documentary that's not really about the pole dancing community and stripping but they could have easily kind of woven that into the S factor thing like still you know you know you know you did could have but I think that they were like trying to really distance stripping and pole dancing for this reason which they didn't really have to do you don't have to distance like I've really been thinking about this a lot lately I'm not gonna go off on a too big of a tangent but we shouldn't create this big fucking divide between pole dancing and stripping really like I, I feel like I've probably been guilty of this in the past myself and I'm gonna admit, admit, admit that where I've like didn't want people to think I was a stripper and stuff but now I'm just like I don't know I'm kind of realizing things with my own female sexuality and shame that I've put on myself and all this stuff anyways now I just let people like think that I'm a stripper if they want to think of it because it it shouldn't matter it shouldn't matter if you're a stripper or fucking I don't know women are not free women are not free women are not equal like even so like even though the documentary was just supposed to be this one niche thing there's still a lot of issues with it, like they should have actually specified that. And also I think that it's sort of wrong timing. Like you, wrong timing. Just wrong time. Like I feel like we should have had first a documentary about, on Netflix, about pole dancing as a whole. So that then after that you could do like the sections of pole dancing and like, you know, the different subgroups and stuff. Cause pole dancing is way more than just reclaiming your body. Some people do it just for fun. Some people, like there's different reasons for pole dancing. It's kind of the wrong timing and they should have at least specified more that this is what the, po the, what the documentary is about like S factor reconnecting with her body not pole dancing as a whole and they actually sort of like it was sort of mixed just as a, a plane looking at it as a documentary like they kind of did sometimes bring in things from pole dancing in general so they kind of were like S factor S factor oh and pole dancing on this other way so it kind of wasn't even focused only on S factor like they sort of made it a semi pole dancing community documentary like they they didn't even like niche pro like you know what I mean because they had some sections where it was like Janine Butterfly and pole dancing in general but then it was supposed to be like they didn't even niche down properly I don't know if that makes sense does that make sense I don't know <laughs> so yeah I think for me it really hit close to home because I had that's what pole dancing means to me sort of is trauma release or trauma healing I don't know if I mentioned that earlier because like I said I already filmed this an earlier version of this video but yeah it means that to me but it doesn't mean that to everyone and so it's it's just not representative of po the pole dancing community as a whole so if you're a non-pole dancer watching this 
just know that Palancing can mean a bunch of different things to different people. It's not all just trauma based necessarily. Another criticism that it's been getting is that it was sort of cult like. And I don't know, I don't think you should use that word lightly. I saw someone comment something about, I'll put it up here if I find it, that, you know, don't use the word cult for something that isn't necessarily a cult. Like, I think that it seemed kind of cult-like in the way they edited, edited, edited it, edited it? Fuck, I can't talk. I feel like it was sort of cult-like in, in the way they edited, edited it. Oh my god! <laughs> Because they filmed this across six months and of course they're going to include all of the really intense scenes and all of those things. Though I do agree with there's also been some criticisms of that some of the like they were fishing out trauma and like I don't know. Like I sort of agree with those comments but I also don't know exactly how it's been edited. But I thought I'd just mention that, like I think I mentioned earlier, I am sort of like all over the place in my opinion. Like I honestly agree with everyone, almost all of the criticisms. I feel like there's truth in most of these criticisms. Criticisms. <laughs> so I think I got the main gist of like the main overview thing that, you know, I had to say or like the main things. My brain doesn't work today. So now that I've gone through uh, most of the things, I think I may be missing some things. Leave comments down below if there's something I'm missing or something I should have addressed. I'm sure I'm missing something because there's actually a lot of things going on in this documentary, a lot of criticisms and so, yeah, I want to have an open discussion in the comments down below. It would also be good for any layman, average Joe or Jennifer, Jenny uh, coming to this video. So if you're a poll answer and you have more criticisms, leave them down below. So at the end here, I want to include some of the insights from stripper Nina Lena underscore on Instagram and the Neen speech on YouTube because I don't know, I felt like I wanted to include some insight from her since I might have missed something myself. So she says, hey, I haven't actually watched the thing itself, but from comments I've seen about it today on Facebook and Instagram, I definitely have an opinion from what I've seen from other people who have seen it. I ate a title choice but then barely mentioning the stripping industry so that's I think I mentioned that earlier I'm like forgetting what I mentioned or not but yeah like using stripping kind of to bait in people but then not really crediting it properly in the documentary it could have easily they could have easily weaved something in there and then she goes on and about how a lot of the people who were in the documentary have a lot of past trauma etc kind of feeds into the fact that Paul has only negative correlations for wanting to to do it. So I can kind of see this because I feel like maybe the layman's view is that like a female who's like doing something that's stereotypically associated with something sexual is probably damaged, if that makes sense. Like it kind of feeds into the fact that oh if you're a pole answer, you're a sexual creature, or like you're very sexual and you're probably damaged because if a woman is sexual apparently she's also damaged. I don't know if that makes sense. Like that's society's view I feel and so I think that's what she's kind of saying that oh you must be damaged if you're pole dancing basically is kind of what it's feeding into. I don't particularly like the title because I feel like it was it's marketing their program slash product by using our industry but not actually talking about it enough. I already addressed that, I agree with that. Especially when a lot of recreational pole dancers don't want to don't want to be affiliated with women who profit from pole. There, if you're a average Joe or Jennifer or Jenny, there is somewhat of a divide in the pole dancing community of recreational pole dancers kind of wanting to distance themselves from strippers and stuff like that and it's it's kind of a problem it kind of creates hostility in the community I feel and then she goes on I feel like there needs to be more material and documentaries that portray the industry in a more positive way because at the moment it's either negative or nothing at all not at all saying to glorify it but there are many positive aspects of the industry that people either forget about or don't want to know I feel like portraying uh, strippers differently and more accurately would lessen the divide in the pole community between strippers slash non-strippers I did not a stripper tag. This one goes sort of deep because I feel like society as a whole sort of dehumanizes strippers or really any female that's sexual or like profits off their sexuality like they're just looked at as either stupid or like they're broken in some way or there was a third one stupid broken in some way oh my god my brain doesn't work 
or an object is what I was thinking about. Like they're just dehumanized. They're not human. Like they're not they're not worth anything. And I feel like if we had a documentary that was on, you know, just strippers or a pole dancing documentary that includes a big section on strippers and you talk have interviews with strippers and just like portray portray different aspects of it like we could maybe humanize them again and like just because a woman chooses to be sexual or you know gain money off of that doesn't mean that she's stupid or less worth or you know that just proves right there that females aren't equal to men like I feel like if a man for example has an OnlyFans it's not like they're really looked down upon it's almost like not humorous but it's like it's not really frowned upon as much if a man were to do that and that right there just says that females aren't equal to men females aren't free to do the same things as men are I saw some sort of a quote thing I'm gonna put here that's something about if I find it that's about basically that's you know, stupid like women it's obvious that women are equal to men like people make fun of women that have only fans and blah 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 I'm, I'm a little off on a tangent but yeah I agree there should be a documentary on the stripping industry and just kind of you know interviewing different strippers and stuff and that these people are human they're just humans Females that have decided to make money off of being sexual, which are already, we're already being sexualized. It honestly feels like, I feel like it would be really freeing in a way to be a stripper. Like, I don't know. Like, I'm like I'm almost tempted, but it's also scary. Like, I, I don't know if I'd actually do it, but like, I don't know. I feel like it would be freeing. I feel like that was a little bit of a tangent. I'm having a lot of reflections on society and female sexuality and feminism. I feel like I'm like slowly becoming a raging feminist and I'm like, I'm not even that mad. Anyways, these are my main issues with it. I also feel like that the title choice and then barely mentioning the industry feeds subconsciously into the fact that it's fine to take our culture for product and marketing and media, but then not credit the women that made it possible to have this as a hobby. I already addressed that. I definitely agree. That's shady AF. And then I've seen a lot of programs lately coming out about recreational pool, but nothing at all about strippers, no stripper documentaries, etc. Again. I definitely think we need some of that. We need some of that. <laughs> we want some of that. Some of these. I'm just kidding. Oh my god. I've gone into what I feel in a lot more detail in the post about it on the Polar page on Facebook. Which, by the way, you guys should join if you're a pole dancer. Only if you're a pole dancer. I'll link in the description or in my comments some pole dancing pages you guys should follow. I love those little communities. And you can see way more comments about this there. Anyways, that was her thoughts. Go follow her on Instagram at NinaLena underscore and the Nina's speech on YouTube because she does YouTube videos. I don't know why I keep touching my fucking lip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One last thing I actually forgot to say earlier is there are people that are saying like, dude, chill. Like there's a lot of like, not a lot, but there is, has been some people that have been sort of mean in the in the comments on these Facebook sites, these pole dancing community Facebook sites that have been sort of mean and kind of in a way discrediting the trauma of these people in the documentary. And I just wanted to read this comment that I also sort of agree with. Like I agree with like most of the comments. That's the thing. I'm like, all of these people have some insight and some, like this whole thing is sort of a mess, this documentary with all of the things that just like, I don't know, came out of it. But this person I also sort of agree with. This person says, y'all are so mean. These women bared their traumas and souls and emotions in this documentary and probably expected the poll community to back them up just to read these comments and be re-victimized by their own. Just because it isn't your view of poll doesn't mean it's not someone else's. And that's not to say I agree with everything the documentary put forth, but I'm not about to bash it on the internet for all to know. And then she says something about it being a cult. And then she says, I've never been more disappointed with poll with the poll community than I am now and I must say I agree there has been some comments that I've been like okay you're being really rude towards the people who have these traumas and use poll dancing for trauma like there's a way to go about giving criticism to the documentary without discrediting people's traumas and so yeah I sort of agree with this too I think that some of this stuff has created some drama that's not to say that all of the criticism is drama like a lot of most of the criticism is valid but some people have been a little bit mean and stuff and I'm gonna have to agree with to an extent with this comment as well so I'm just all over the place <laughs> with my opinion or my thoughts but let me know what you guys think in the comments down below I hope you guys enjoyed this video give it a like if you guys enjoyed it it really helps me out as well as possibly subscribing to my channel I'm gonna be making more pole dancing content in the future and yeah I hope <laughs> I almost just repeated myself oh my god be the light you guys want to see in the world I'm gonna go 
Bye, guys.